Hello everyone, this is Eagle. Today we present the top 10 RTS games of all time. If you like this video, please subscribe and enable the alarm button to receive new videos and updates. As usual, before we start, we will go through our criteria that influenced our decision to select those games. Obviously, there are lots of great RTS games out there, but we selected what we believe the best based on First, the concept of the gameplay and how unique it is compared to other RTS games. Second, the campaign story and how solid its structure and whether it leaves an impact that cannot be forgotten. Graphic and audio design as well as the soundtracks, learning curve difficulty, game support, updates and bugs, as well as the size of the game community. So guys, here we go. The top 10 games of all time in the RTS category are Number 10 in this list Wargame Red Dragon Eugene Wargame Red Dragon is a modern military RTS game by Eugene Systems. The game events takes place during the Cold War era, but this time the Soviet Union does not collapse. The game actually reminds us of the famous RTS world in conflict, as the concept is similar in some aspects. The game concept is based on deploying your units from a pre-made deck where you can design your division based on various sections such as infantry, recon, armor, artillery and support. In order to win the game, you need to control certain zones within the map using your command units. Needless to say that you lose that zone if you lose the command unit. The concept isn't new though, as it was presented in the previous titles of this game such as Airland Battle and European Escalation. However, War Game offers more units, factions and most importantly, it also offers never warfare. Which makes this game one of the few that offers a complete RTS warfare experience. There are four campaign stories. Two of them are for the Allied, while the other two you play the Soviets or the Chinese. The good thing about the campaign gameplay is that it allows you to plan from a strategic view using a big meta map before you start deploying your divisions and fight every battle. Eugene tried to make a campaign a bit alive by having some cinematic cutscenes in the middle of the campaign. But more efforts could have been done to make it more interesting. The learning curve of the game requires some patience. However, once you master it, the game becomes really fun to play, especially in massive player versus player multiplayer games. Even though the game was released in 2014, Eugene continued to support the game with patches, DLCs and buttons, which make the game quite popular even today. The game physics is also great even by today's standards. Number 9. Steel Division Steel Division 44 was released in 2017 and followed by its successor Steel Division 2 in 2019 by Eugene Systems. The game is set in World War II era and offers a unique style of gameplay which is based on the concept of the front line, where you need to push your opponent front line in order to generate an area of influence on the map which eventually leads to winning the game. Despite the fact that Steel Division 44 was a much better version than Steel Division 2, it actually failed to draw many players, which might be due to bad marketing of the game itself. With that being said, the unique playstyle of Steel Division 2 makes it one of the most interesting RTS games of all time. There have been several trials to make the gameplay authentic as much as possible by having over 78 historical divisions that fought in World War II up until this moment. The gameplay, however, does not feel very authentic. The game balance is also very questionable, as the mechanics of the game feels far from being realistic, such as having a light tank destroying a heavy tank, or having a heavy bomber that is more vulnerable to anti-air than a light plane. All of that can let the player wonder sometimes if he's playing a paper rock scissors, except that the scissor does not beat the paper this time. Not to mention the high learning curve and the lack of proper official in-game trainings, which makes it even more difficult to grasp the weird mechanics. That being said, mastering the gameplay feels like mastering to read upside down, but once you are able to do so, the gameplay itself is unique and fun. As for the single player missions, there are historical campaigns and scenarios, but they also lack the cinematic factor that can turn the campaign into more intense and appealing experience. The game physics is also great and Eugene continues to provide updates, DLCs and bug fixes. However, 
it seems that the developers of this game need to learn more about how actual combat, combat experience works, especially for a game that is trying to be realistic. Overall, in our opinion, Steel Division makes it to this list because of its unique frontline concept. However, more efforts need to be done in other areas of the game. Number 8. Man of War Assault Squad 2 Man of War Assault Squad 2 comes as a DLC to its predecessor, Man of War Assault Squad, which was released in 2011 and followed by many DLCs. The game is set up in World War II era, where you get to play many factions, such as Japan, Germany, United States and the Soviets. The campaign gameplay has plenty of missions, which mainly focuses on either defending or assaulting an enemy position, and even though there are lots of missions, the mission design sounds a bit repetitive, which might be boring sometimes. The multiplayer part of the game is great, however. The gameplay is also pretty realistic, especially the tank warfare. The game audio and graphics are not bad, however there are various bugs. When it comes to player base, it is important to mention that the game has a large community. It's worth to mention that Men of War 2 have been just announced, so we are very excited to see how the next installment of this game is going to look like. Number 7 in this list, Call to Arms. Developed by the same developer of Men of War Assault Squad, Digital Mindsoft brings its modern RTS Call to Arms to the world. The game features four factions, USA, German, Russian armies, and GRM, which is a rebel army with mostly Russian weapons. The campaign stories are good and feels fantastic to play. The gameplay, however, is pretty similar to the concept of Men of War. The game adds another dimension to the gameplay by having a third and first person direct control of your units. So you can actually take control of certain units and play the game in a first person shooter mode. With that being said, the AI is pretty good and it would be almost impossible to finish the game that way. However, these modes come handy if you want to enjoy controlling a tank or maybe a sniper to hunt down your enemies. The multiplayer gameplay is also great, but it's worth to mention that the game servers were unstable for a long time, resulting into lags and game crashes. Efforts have been made from the Digital Mindsoft side to fix the issue, and the game has better performance now during multiplayer gameplay. The model the units Details such as tanks and weapons looks really impressive. Audio however might need some improvements. The game support is also a bit slow and there are still some bugs which need to be fixed. Overall, the game is really promising and has a growing community. Call to Arms Gates of Hell Combining Call to Arms and Menophore, Digital Mindsoft releases its brilliant Call to Arms standalone DLC, Gates of Hell. Gates of Hell features two factions so far, which are the Germans and the Soviets, but there are plans for more in the future. The game dives deeply into detailed micromanagement of each unit, while as usual, you can collect items from the ground or from the inventory of another unit. Needless to say, that the game fighting mechanism is very detailed and feels very close to military combat experience. Gates of Hell also support the direct control mode where you can play as a third or a first person shooter. The campaign story is well written and supported with cinematic cutscenes that adds extra spice to the gameplay. The mission design is also unique, however the game campaign feels shorter than it should be. The multiplayer experience is also as great as Call to Arms, and there is a cooperative gameplay where you can actually finish all the campaign stories with a friend. The graphics and sounds are great. However, the game still requires more bug fixing, as we encountered many bugs during the gameplay. Company of Heroes BK Mood Developed by dedicated fans from the community of the original Company of Heroes game, Company of Heroes Blitzkrieg Mood deserves to take its own place in this list. It's well known that there are many mods out there made by the community for Company of Heroes. However, the efforts that were done on the Blitzkrieg mode have transformed the game from just a mode into a totally standalone game. While the concept of the game remains the same as the original title, the game featured enormous amount of new units that did not appear in COH Vanilla. There is also significant amount of tweaks and modifications that have been done 
which completely changed the multiplayer experience compared to the original title. Such as the range reworks, scouts, recon and damage mechanics, all of which delivers a complete new game experience. The Blitzkrieg mode is also available on Steam and still receives regular updates and fixes from the devs of this mode. There is also a decent game community and the player base is actually not bad for a game mode. Number 4 in this list, Age of Empires 2. Age of Empires 2 was released almost over 20 years ago. However, it has been remastered twice, once in 2013 and the last remaster was in 2019 with the release of the definitive edition. The game focuses on city building, such as all other Age of Empires titles, in which you develop your civilization and engage in a war with other civilizations. The game also has over 30 civilizations to play with. Each one has its own unique units and buildings, which affects the tactics you would play in your game. The game also focuses on historical context of these civilizations, where you can play with well-known great leaders in history such as Sultan Salah din The definitive edition of this game has received lots of enhancements in terms of music, audio and graphics, which makes the game look like a brand new released game. Number 3. Company of Heroes Developed and released in 2006 by Relic, Company of Heroes is one of the greatest games in the history of RTS gaming. The game is set up during World War II era and focuses on base building where you battle against your opponents to either capture a strategic point on the map or to annihilate each other. The multiplayer gameplay is really intense and fun to play. The campaign story is also produced in a very cinematic way which let you get attached to the game even more. The single player gameplay follows the US during the invasion of Normandy. However, there were also two other DLCs released after that. The first DLC is Company Fears Opposing Fronts, which covers the British and the Canadian part of the invasion, but it adds also a German campaign that covers the German victory in Operation Market Garden. The second DLC is Tales of Valor, which has only three missions. However, it is notable for its Tiger mission that follows the famous Tiger Ace, Michael Wittmann. During the mission, the direct control mode of the tank was introduced for the first time. There is also another Company of Heroes that was released for a short period of time and named Company of Heroes Online. The game focused completely on massive multiplayer online gaming. The game was fantastic, but unfortunately it got cancelled. The final edition that was released of this game was Company of Heroes 2 in 2013, which was a total disappointment compared to the original title. Today, work on COH3 is in progress and we hope that it lives up to the original Company of Heroes standards. Despite the fact that Company of Heroes Vanilla was released in 2006, the game still has larger community than some of the games that were released recently, such as Steel Division 2 for example. Moving on to Command and Conquer Red Alert 2. It is basically considered as the mother of all RTS games. And there hasn't been a single RTS player who was born in the 80s that did not play this game. The game focuses on base building and mining resources from, from all over the map to support the income of your base. The game features a decent number of factions split between Allied and Soviets, however each army within any faction would still has its own unique units. Each faction has 12 missions to play, filled with cutscenes that makes the campaign more cinematic and appealing. There are as well two training missions that are available. The game features two multiplayer modes where you can battle against friends using LAN or play online against other players. A DLC called Yuri's Revenge was also released in 2001 and it is worth to mention that there was also Red Alert 3 released in 2008. 
The audio and graphics of Red Alert 2 were amazing considering the time of its release, the game left its own mark on the history of RTS gaming. Hopefully one day we can see another Red Alert in the future. Number 1. On the top of the list, Warleading Conflict. Warleading Conflict is a 2007 real-time strategy game developed by the Swedish company Massive Entertainment. The game's settings and story takes place in an alternate 1989, where diplomacy fails and Soviet Union invades Western Europe, triggering, of course, World War III. Looking on what is happening with the world today, that sounds like it's going to be a true event. The single-player story allows the player to assume control of a United States Army officer who takes control of battalions of US forces try, trying desperately to defend his homeland against a sudden invasion of Soviet Union to the US mainland. The fight was so desperate to the level that forced the US to throw a nuclear bomb on its own soil to stop the Russian advance. The story is told in a very dramatic and intense atmosphere, delivering an experience similar to, the, to Hollywood movies. In fact, the storytelling voiceover was done by Hollywood star Alec Baldwin, which added another intense dimension to the gameplay that made the single player feel that he is part of the story. An expansion back, World in Conflict Soviet Assault was released in 2009 and added additional campaign missions, but this time from Soviet Union perspective and it was as good as the original title. The game offered multiplayer functionality, supporting up to 16 players online or over LAN. Unfortunately though, Massive Entertainment was sold to Ubisoft, which decided to kill any future plans for the game. We believe that World in Conflict was the game that inspired many RTS games that came or yet to come, such as War Game or Regiment. However, World in Conflict, in our opinion, deserved to be on the top for its gameplay and uniqueness. And we think that it would have been definitely stayed on the top if it had continued. Thank you everyone for watching and please like and subscribe if you like the content of this video.